hi it's Susan welcome back to my channel this is episode three of a four-part series on the books I use for junk journaling and first my standard disclaimer you can buy these books you can cut them up tear them up glue them in your uh, junk journals glue them in your glue books do whatever you want to like that and you can turn around and sell those books what you cannot do is you cannot scan these images and put them in your journals and then sell the journals and you cannot scan these images and put them in a digital kit of any kind and sell the images. You need to have the right to copy. That's what copyright is all about. But go ahead and search for these books in your favorite used bookstores, online or in person. They make some great additions to your journals. So this category is nature and other animals. Uh, kind of just so I didn't have this super, super long video going through all of them. This is, this is a really fun book and it's got nice old paper in it. This is the Hammond uh, Nature Atlas of America. And it is a large book. So it is nine and a half by 12, but, so you've got more than just the animals in here. You've got uh, some different places you can visit in nature. But when you get to the pictures of the animals here, they're a nice size. These are more like um, four by six images in here and they're paintings that you can cut up. Flowers, they look very vintagey. And the paper is a nice weight, not super heavy, but um, you can get some maps in there, some fish, frogs. So you just got all kinds of things in nature. There are a lot of text pages, so you might want to be looking for a good bargain on this, but considering that each page you might get, you know, two or three pictures on it, it, it can turn out to be a pretty good deal. So that is the Nature Atlas of America. Then we have the big ones first. Wildlife Sketchbook, Keith Brockie's Wildlife Sketchbook. This one is awesome because you have the pictures and you have the font. Look at this. Oh, this paper is uh, getting a little aged. So you've got some regular photographs in here, but then when you get to his sketches, look at here. And the font with these sketches is just gorgeous. Love that Benny. Gail, I'm thinking of you. Geese. So this book is, it's not small, it is 8 by 10, but because most of the images, you, most of the pages have several images on them, you can cut them apart. Oh, that's a beautiful tree. And that is Wildlife Sketchbook. Oh, this is another fun one. Audubon Game Animals very interesting animals in here. So you do have a lot of text, but, uh, and this is a big book. This is about eight and a half by 11, but the pictures don't usually take up the full page. So they're gonna fit in things in your books just fine. And these are animals that you're not necessarily gonna find in a lot of your other nature things. Black box, red box, they're older images and I just think they're very interesting. The porcupine. I don't see a whole lot of pictures of porcupines that look vintage, that aren't photographs. Polar bear. So it's got a lot of pages in it, so you do get a lot for your money in this Audubon game animals. Here we have Janet Marsh's Nature Diary. I just love her style of illustration. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful images. And again, where you've got the, uh, where she's made her little notes on it, you've got some beautiful fonts that will also augment your journal very nicely. So you've got little images and then like here, you've got the larger images. So you get a lot of use out of all the images in this book. It's a nice weight paper. It's not super thin, but it's not super heavy. It is matte. Whoops. Bump the tripod, sorry for making you dizzy. Hard to find a lot of good images of bees and ladybugs that are vintagey looking. 
So there you go. That is Janet Marsh's Nature Diary. All right. Some creepy crawlies here. Another one of the little golden nature guides. Reptiles and amphibians. So maybe you're doing a book for a, a young boy that likes these kinds of things. You've got all those critters in there. And of course, I gotta look for the dog books. You have the red book of dogs and the blue book of dogs. These are awesome. I love these. And you've just got a few photographs in here. You've got some black and white photographs and you've got some paintings and they're all these different sizes. They'd be great for tags, for envelopes, pockets, just dressing up a page. And the red book. So if you're a dog lover, these are two to look for. Okay. Field Guide to Mushrooms and Toadstools of Britain and Europe. Love this. I also bonus here. I've got the library ticket on it, so that's great. All sizes of mushrooms. Oh, these are, this is a small book. This is four and a half inches by about eight inches. So these are really small for uh, even a mini book would work. And then you've got larger images in here as well. And these illustrations look old enough that I feel good about using them in a, in a vintage journal. They're not photographs. And the paper's a nice weight and every page is illustrated. So you're gonna have to decide which size you want. But I mean, what, what great images you've got in here of mushrooms and toadstools. Here's another nature sketchbook by Somebody whose name I can't pronounce, <laughs> I won't even try. Right here, just on the in paper alone, look at all these wonderful images. And again, interesting font. Now this book is about seven inches by six and a half. Bees, always happy when I can find bees. So while the, the images do take up much of the page, the book is not oversized, so you can cut things apart or use a whole page like this and it will fit just fine. Oh, look at this. Look at this owl, I love him. Love him. These would be great to cut apart. Put one on each page in your journal. So that is Nature's Sketchbook. We have another Mushrooms and Toadstools. This is written by, or illustrated by the same guy that did one of the other books, whose name I will not try to pronounce but these have got a lot of text pages here, but then when you get to these images, oh, look at those. And again, you're gonna to have to decide which size, side you want to use, but there are some fabulous mushrooms in here. Love it. When you're doing a nature journal, these are some good ones to have. A lot of, lot of images in that book, even though it's small. Um, like I said, looking for bees all the time. An instant guide to insects. Library card score. Single page with one insect on each page. And I, honestly, I got this book for the for the bees. I wanted the bees. I didn't care about the other stuff. Moths are nice. The butterflies were nice, but I have those elsewhere. It was the bees that I wanted, <laughs> like on here. So that's an instant guide to insects. Fish, doing a beach book, doing a book for fishermen. Fishes is a nice one. These are old, this was the kind of, in fact, this is very similar. I think this might've been the same kind of book I had when I was a kid. So we're going back to the 60s here. And that's it, just all kinds of fish. And this book is a nice size. This is four and a half by seven and a half. So you get a lot of images out of this book at that size, even some flowers. And this is yet another, I think this is different from the other mushroom. Nope, that's the same one. That's the same field guide. I have two of those, lucky me. Here is another mushroom book, Mushrooms of Northwest North America. You can tell already, illustrations are gonna be awesome. So you've got drawings, and then you've got illustrations. Paper's a little thinner. This would be really good for collage. It's not gonna bulk up your journal very much. Images on both sides of the paper in a lot of cases, so you will have to make a decision. But dang, look at how beautiful. And even the, 
uh, notes around the mushrooms are in a lovely font. I just love that. And lots and lots of images. I mean, all of these images here. Look at that. So these back here is just all text. So this part of the book is all images. That is Mushrooms of Northwest North America. Ended up with two books of that. And then the Gardener's Bug Book. I just happened to find this uh, in a store online that, you know, it was like a discounted price. I think it was like 99 cents because it's a lot of text. But the images, when you do get to them, oh, were great. So I bought it because it was a bargain and the shipping was free. And the few images that it had really spoke to me. So that is what I have for uh, critters and nature type books. There is one more video in the series coming miscellaneous. The previous two were birds and flowers. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now.